Our subscribers keep telling us to visit Florida's west coast, so we took a little two-day vacation to Punta Gorda and Englewood Beach. If you don't know where that is, here, I'll show you. It's an area full of snaking river creeks, state forest public hiking trails, and miles and miles of white sandy beaches. In this video, we're going to do some fishing and we're going to eat lots of food at the local restaurants. You can find the info on every place we visit in the video description. So let's get started and hit the road. After a five hour drive from our home in the Florida Keys, we are hungry and make our first stop and grab some lunch at Peace River Seafood. By the way, if any of this food looks good, make sure you smash that like button. <laughs> Peace River Seafood is an authentic crab house set in an old Florida cracker house. They are known for their fresh steamed blue crabs, shrimp, oysters, clams, and stone crabs. Their seafood is sourced locally and delivered daily by local fishermen. In addition to its restaurant, they also have a seafood market where you can buy fresh caught fish, crabs, clams, and more. Boy do those look good! Blue crabs is one of my favorites, so you know I ordered a big old pile of them. Blue crabs do require some work to pull all the meat out, but that's part of the fun for me. And when you find the meat, boy is it juicy. Sitting around a big pile of crabs, hydrating with some beer, and talking to your friends, it's a good time. And the party didn't stop at the blue crabs. We also got an order of fried mullet, which I gotta admit, it's my first time eating mullet and it's as good as any other fish I've ever ate. Caitlin got herself some crab cakes and man, crab cakes are my favorite and they did not skimp out on stuffing those crab cakes with a lot of blue claw. A plus, baby. I just done filled my stomach up with blue claws over at Peace River Seafood and now we are at Alligator Bay rum distillery and we're gonna learn how the Florida sugar cane is turned into the rum here and I'm hoping we get a drink some of it too. <laughs> Let's go on inside. Alligator Bay Distillers is a Florida craft distillery aiming to produce high quality handcrafted cane to bottle spirits. They give free tours every day from 11 to 3 p.m. This family-run business makes delicious Florida rum with 100% Florida molasses, which is locally sourced just 70 miles east of the distillery's headquarters. The sugarcane molasses is stored in these huge holding tanks, where it is then mixed with water and yeast and then fermented in these big tanks that are temperature controlled. Once the yeast has eaten all the sugar and turned it into alcohol, that sweet alcoholic mixture is poured into these beautiful copper stills where it is then boiled. Because alcohol evaporates before water, all the alcohol vapor will travel up the still through the copper cooling coils, which turns the alcohol vapors back into liquid. And this is my favorite part. High grade alcohol, something straight out of a Moonshiners episode, pours right out of the copper pipe and into a keg. Depending what flavor Alligator Bay Distillers is trying to achieve, they will either infuse the alcohol with various citrus or honey spices, or they will age it inside burnt oak barrels. And that gives us lots of flavors to sample at the end of the tour. And boy, did we sample those flavors. Yeehaw. Bam, and that was the Alligator Bay Distillery. And we got ourselves a bottle of their spice rum. Apparently this is the award-winning bottle. Shh, got the good stuff. 
And now we're here in our hotel, the Wannabe Inn, and the views are crazy. We got a big view right at the ocean, our bedroom. Woo! We're gonna be waking up to the oceans. But before I show you more around this hotel, tomorrow morning, we got a tarpon fishing trip planned with Captain Chris. So that's happening tomorrow. But tonight, we got one more dinner planned. We're about to head to dinner. We'll see you guys there, and then it's fishing time. We take a short stroll down the beach from Wannabe Inn and end up at Lock and Key, which is beachfront dining at its best. Great food at great prices in a casual beach atmosphere. They have live entertainment several nights a week on their outside patio. It's the perfect place to go for lunch or go for dinner and soak up the gorgeous sunsets and enjoy the warmth of Florida. And if you don't want to miss the game, Go and catch your favorite team on one of their many TVs with your family and friends. After eating seafood all day, I was stoked to get this perfectly cooked steak topped with blue cheese, my favorite. Caitlin ordered the Parmesan chicken pasta, which looked and tasted super amazing. Ugh, I love it when they cook my steak perfectly. And you think this is where the story ends? Oh, oh no. We went big and got their chocolate chip mint ice cream cake slice. And they warned us it would be big. And no, they were not kidding. We were not disappointed. Full and satisfied, we walk back to our room along the beach and watch the sunset. We're back at our place here at Wannabe Inn. Man, I'm stuffed. Did you guys see how big that dessert was? They warned us that it was gonna be big, but it was like big, big. We gotta get into bed because tomorrow morning, we're waking up at four in the morning. Because at six, we're meeting up with Captain Chris with Airborne Outdoors, and we're gonna do some tarpon fishing. Off to bed I go, and we'll see you in the morning. We get an early start to the day and meet Captain Chris at the boat ramp. Airborne Outdoors Fishing Charters is a veteran owned and operated saltwater fishing charter and hunting guide service based out of Southwest Florida. I'll put their information in the video description below. If you're looking for a custom guided trip with the family and friends, whether you want some light action fishing, heavy action fishing, or just looking to do some fly fishing, it's all possible here. What a fishing trip with Captain Chris. Big thanks for taking us out. If you're ever in the Punta Gorda area, make sure you hit up Chris. Whether it's one person, two people, 20 people, he'll put you on a charter, whether it's his boat or one of his buddy's boats. Hit him up, his information's right here. I'll add it to the video description below too. And now we are here at Lighthouse Point Grill and we're about to eat some more food. We had a reservation at 12.30, but we ended up fishing a little longer than planned, but it's okay. Let's get to eating. Lighthouse Grill at Stump Pass is located on the water at, well, you guessed it, Stump Pass Marina. You can come by land or by sea. Take your boat and turn in at the ICW Marker 17A to enjoy great food and drinks in a tropical setting. We 
start off with a pile of mussels that were cooked to perfection in such a delicious buttery wine sauce. Mm. Before I can finish my first cold beer, Caitlin's Burger already arrives and I get one of my personal favorites, the Angler's French Dip Roast Beef Sandwich with a side of jalapeno hush puppies. Oh man, I'm really getting some nautical vibes here as we finish our food. Damn, that was good. My stomach feels really good. You know, something that I realized about all the restaurants here so far, the food comes out so fast. Normally I'll have like a drink, two drinks, sometimes even three drinks before the food comes out. Here, every restaurant, it's like we order a drink, I take my first sip and then the food's already coming out. It's crazy. And everyone's really nice, so that's really cool. And we're about to go to dinner. As soon as we get out of this, our fishing attire, let's get dressed. Oh, <laughs> dang, look at that. We're all showered and clean and ready to have some fun. Where are we going? Farlow's. Farlow's on the water. Farlow's on the water. Caribbean cuisine with a southern twist. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. This is our last restaurant we visit on the trip, and Farlow's on the water makes it a really special night for us. Located on Anger Creek and surrounded by lush tropical gardens, you can't help but smile and feel smack dab in the middle of paradise. They serve Caribbean cuisine with a southern twist, fresh seafood and steaks. They have both inside and outside dining and offer a full cocktail service, one I'm gonna be taking advantage of. Excellent. Patrick, Excellent. will you be so kind to fire in a half dozen of escargot? Sure. Gotta love an escargot family. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Take care, guys. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. That was great. Right? Thank you. My pleasure. Look at you. Wow. That's one way to start. Right? <laughs> this place is pretty awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. Beautiful we, view, great service. That's the appetizer tower we just <laughs> got. Coconut and crusted shrimp. Fried green tomatoes. Calamari. Calamari. <laughs> They're bringing me some escargot, one of my favorites. And, and they got the real escargot, the real big snails. <laughs> nope, not you those. You got a half dozen coming. <laughs> yeah, got a half dozen coming. <laughs> Woo! These drinks are so fresh and tasty. One of these a day will definitely keep the doctor away. The escargot is out of this world. And if you're like me and it's your thing, you have to try these. All of their food is made fresh daily and the herbs that they use in their delicious dishes are grown in their garden at the restaurant. I get the Wahoo entree and Caitlin gets the chicken pasta. The Wahoo has a sweet sauce on it that I can't even describe. You just, you gotta go and try it. Caitlin gets the chicken pasta, which looks on point. And I'll be honest, I don't know how we've been eating so much food, but when it's this good, you just have to. And yeah, we didn't stop there. We are so stuffed right now, but we're gonna try and fit these desserts. You got the bourbon bread pudding pecan. Mm -hmm and I got the B-52. These desserts are reason enough to come here. A warm chocolate drink while enjoying the tropical colors as the night comes on. Man, that is the perfect ending to our trip. We make our way back to the beach at Wannabe Inn where we fall asleep with our doors open, listening to the waves breaking. That's gonna be a good night's sleep. We wake up the next morning and walk around the beach before driving back home. Wannabe Inn is a collection of buildings nestled between the Gulf of Mexico and Lemon Bay. Wannabe Inn offers one of the best views of the open ocean that I've seen and also has full access to the intercoastal waterways and the flats where you can find some serious peace and quiet. This is where the nature thrives and it's a great place to bring your fishing pole. The beach is the perfect place to cast out the South Florida Fishing Channel Pompano Rig. You know, for Pompano and Whiting. And while you're waiting for a bite, I like to watch the Sandpipers. They're one of my favorite birds to watch because they run up and down the water line looking for sand fleas. And they usually get them. There's also a boat ramp and available docks at the Wannabe Inn so you can bring your own boat. Here's the very best part. They have an ice machine. <laughs> yeah, baby, you know we like that ice. If you ever visit any of the places you saw in this video, be sure to mention you saw them on the South Florida Fishing Channel. And on our drive back to the Florida Keys, we stop at a rest stop off I-75 and saw a gator swimming. And it just made me think, man, do I love Florida. 
This place is awesome. I got some exciting news guys and I got a big giveaway coming up but first if you ever plan on visiting the southwest coast of Florida definitely check out pureflorida.com for tons of great activities and places to visit all the restaurants we went to the distillery the fishing trip we took I'm going to add the names, websites, and addresses to all those places in the video description below if any of you guys are interested in checking them out. It was a freaking good time. There's just something about a white sandy beach. I got a couple really big announcements. Remember I gave away the KBO electric bike uh, like two months ago? Well, the guy that won that bike, I emailed him like four or five times. No, I think six times now. Never heard a response from him. So guess what? This is the box with the brand new one the orange one but I wanted to do something special I'm gonna take the orange electric bike and I'm gonna do a little custom camo paint job on it a little red white and blue badass for fishing badass for hunting I'm gonna deck it out a little bit and then we're gonna give that away again so stay tuned for that giveaway but even bigger even bigger news than that I am only a couple hundred subscribers away from hitting 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. That's a freaking milestone. It's been 2017 is when I started the South Florida Fishing Channel. So I'm doing something special for that. Right before we hit 100,000 subscribers, I will be starting a live stream. So keep an eye out for that live stream. I can't tell you when it's gonna happen. It might be two days from now. It might be three days. It might be one day. I don't know. But as soon as I'm at like nine, the 9,950 subscribers, I'm probably gonna start that live stream. I'll be giving away some stuff and I'm trying to think of something special, extra special to do for that. So I wanna give a big thanks to all you guys, everyone that hits that like button, everyone that leaves comments, hits the subscribe button, ev everyone that gives me good feedback and just supports the channel and yeehaw guys. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. We got some good fishing videos in the works and I will see you guys on the very next episode. Cheers.